I call Annalisa Clifford Gould. Just if I may, for the record. Yes. Um, I understand you're probably going to allow this witness, but we're going to object to this is the mother of the defendant, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the um, the testimony that she's going to offer relates to uh, these allegations that Chapter 232 applies to this case. It's our position that the juvenile code does not apply based on the cases that we have provided to the court. So any testimony she can offer on these issues is not relevant. Um, that's our position. May I respond, Your Honor? You can. I'm going to let her testify, but if you want to make any record on it, you can. I'll just cite cases in my subsequent briefing, Your Honor. Okay. You can go ahead and call your witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Please raise your right hand. Do you promise or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please have a seat. Go ahead, Ms. Rolson. Thank you, Your Honor. Annalisa, would you state your name and spell it for the record, please? Annalisa, A-N-N-A-L-I-S-A, Clifford Gold, C-L-I-F-F-O-R-D-G-O-L-D. Who are you in relation to this case? I'm the defendant's mother. That's Jaden? Yes. Have you ever testified before? No. Nervous? Yes. A couple rules for testifying. Let the person ask their full question before you answer, okay? Make sense? Yes. And make sure you answer with a yes or a no or a full explanation to answer the question, okay? Okay. Because this court reporter has taken down everything that everyone says in the courtroom, okay? Thank you. Okay. And if I ask a question or someone else asks a question that you don't understand, you can ask us to restate it, okay? Okay. Annalisa, have you ever interacted with law enforcement? Have you ever been accused of a crime or a traffic ticket or anything like that before? Traffic ticket. No crimes? No crimes. Does Chayden have any criminal history? No. He, he got in trouble for not wearing a seat belt in the back seat once. That was it. They didn't take him into a police station and interrogate him for that? No. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes. Annalisa, I just handed you a document that's labeled it's a sealed exhibit. It's triple L for the record. Do you recognize that? I recognize my signature. Is your signature at the bottom? Yes, it is. You signed that document on November 4th of 2021? Yes. Who gave you that document? Richard Vail and Trent Valletta. And do you know who they are in relation to this case? I know that they are DCI. Where were you given that document? Where were you physically? I was at the Jefferson County Law Center in a large office. Okay. Looking at that document, there's four items listed up top. Yes. One of, the, one of them is they're supposed to, uh, law enforcement is supposed to tell you that your child's in custody. Do you see that part of it? I do. All right. And did you know when you were given that document that, that Shaden was in custody? No. Ex uh, why do you say no? Do you want the long answer? <laughs> um, what I was told is that all of the students and parents of Noemma Graber were being rounded up to try and figure out what had happened, why she had disappeared. I understood that all of the students were together 
and that the parents were there and that they wanted to be able to talk to the students and they needed my permission to be able to talk to the students. So you didn't understand that Chayden was in custody being held at the point in time when you signed that? No, I thought he was in a room with other students. Let's talk about that second item, the, the delinquent act or, or crime accused. Yes. Did anyone tell you that Nohima Graber had been found dead when you signed that document? No, I knew that she was still missing. Okay. I... <laughs> Did you ask anyone about whether or not she had been found? Yes. Um, in the morning at 5.30 when Trent Valletta was in my home, I asked, he indicated that they were trying to resolve what had happened and I asked him, had she been found, was she okay? And he said, we will explain everything at the police station. Did they explain anything to you at the police station before you signed that document? Not before I signed it. Okay. And that, that uh, discussion with Agent Valletta, that was in, in your home? Correct. And Chayden was still in your home at that time? Correct. There's a part of that document that says that you can confer and speak with your child. Did they tell you that you could go in and talk with Jaden? No. And when I asked, I was told no. Who did you ask? Trent Valletta. And he told you that you couldn't go speak with Jaden? Correct. May also have been Richard Vale. I don't remember exactly. Would you say that again a little clearer, please? It may also have been Richard Vale who told me no. I don't recall which one of the two. I was told no more than once. And at the time you signed that document, did you, is that when they told you no or was it a different time? Uh, it was both before and after. Did they talk to you at all about getting an attorney for yourself or for Chayden or anyone else? No, in fact, I was advised against it. Explain that. Chauncey Molding recommended I not get an attorney because of the expense that I use the state provided attorney. Okay. That was later though, right? Correct. Okay. That wasn't in regards to signing that document? No. Okay. Talk to me, well, explain to the court. You wear corrective lenses? I do. Okay. A document you're looking at, you can read that? I can read it with my glasses on, yes. Okay. Explain to the court eyesight and what you could read and couldn't read on the morning in question, November 4th last year. So in the morning with all the police officers in my home, I was flustered when we were leaving, could not find my correct glasses, found an old pair that I can drive with but I can't read with. When I was given this document, I couldn't read it. And Richard Vale explained to me it just was to allow them to talk to Chayden and, the, and every parent was being asked to sign it um, so that they could talk to all of the students and they needed a parent's permission to be able to talk to the students. And he drew a line on the bottom and made an X, pushed it in front of me and asked me to sign it. And that was Agent Vale who did that? Correct. And I just want to make sure I understand. He said he just needed you to sign that so he could talk to the students? To Chayden, yes. Okay. And he didn't talk to you about any of that information up top? No. Before you signed that form, were you told that Chayden was a suspect in any crime? No. Before you signed that form, were you told that there had even been a homicide? No.
would you have granted permission for law enforcement to speak with Shaden if you knew there had been a homicide? Not without a lawyer present. Would you have granted permission for law enforcement to speak with Shaden if you knew he was a suspect? No, not without a lawyer present. Before you signed that, were you given an opportunity to speak to a lawyer? No. While you were at the Fairfield Police Department, you called for some advice, right? Yes. And that was after you had signed that form? Yes. Can you tell the court if you know or recall what time you spoke with someone for advice? It was at 7.15 a.m. based on my phone log. And is that a phone log for your cell phone? Correct. Who did you speak with? My friend who's a former police detective, Amy Jaffe. Does she live in a different state? She lives in Oregon. Okay. So at approximately 7.13 in the morning, is that what you said? Yes. What happened after that conversation with Ms. Jaffe? During the conversation, I had her on speakerphone. She clarified her credentials to Trent Valletta, and the two of them spoke. Trent filled her in, and she said, you need to shut down the interrogation now. And I looked at Trent Valletta, and I said, yes, now. And Trent said, confirmed, you want me to shut down the interrogation? I said, yes. He got up, he left the room, he returned a few minutes later, I was still on the phone with Amy, Amy. he confirmed that he had shut down the interrogation. And that was at 7.13 in the morning? Correct. And did that happen at the beginning of that conversation? Or, or Yes, within the first few minutes. Okay. Did you learn anything later on about how long the interview with Jaden went? It went on for hours. Would you say long after you told him to stop it? Yes, long after. Do you know if Chayden had his phone in that interview? Do you know either way? I, he did not. And uh, what I found out later is that it was taken from him while he was still at my home. Okay. So you didn't have any way to communicate with Chayden? No. Other than through law enforcement? Correct. And you were denied access to Chaden by law enforcement? Correct. And you told them to stop the interview, but they didn't? Correct. How old's Chaden? At that time, he was 16. Okay. Just. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. Mr. Brown. Hang on a second, Judge. I'm sorry. Do you have a, is it a hyphenated last name? Is that right? Technically, no. Okay. So your last name is? Two words. Clifford Gold. So if I call you Miss Clifford Gold, that's accurate? Correct. Miss right. <clears throat> um, Clifford Gold, did you uh, go to the law center with the defendant? I did not. Okay. How was it that you were notified that he was at the law center? When all of the officers and the DCI folks were in my home, I was given the option of riding with Chayden or coming on my own. I requested that they get Chayden's father. My intention was that I would go with Chayden um, and that his father would follow. I asked Trent Valletta specifically, does it make a difference if I go with him? 
or on my own? He said, no, it makes no difference. So I said, all right, since I had yet to see Chayden's father, I traveled separately and followed them to the um, police station. So just to kind of flesh out the circumstances a bit more, um, officers came to your home on what day? Was that November the 4th? Correct. Um, did they knock on the door? Yes. All right. And were you asleep at the time? Yes. It was about 5.30 in the morning, is that right? Yes. Uh, were you and your husband uh, both home? No, I'm divorced. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. So it was you and who else in the home? Only Chayden. Okay. Uh, and you're divorced from Chayden's father? Correct. All right. And where was he living at the time? Around the corner. Okay. So very near where you and Chayden lived, correct? Yes. All right. Did you notify him when officers um, came to your house at 5.30 in the morning? No, I asked them to go and notify him. Okay. Did they do that? I believe so. Um, was there any show of force by the officers uh, while they were at your house? No. Were they pleasant with you as far as you can describe? Yes. And then they did go and get um, the defendant's father? Yes. Did he come to your residence? No. Did he meet you at the police station? Or at the law center, I should say? He went to the law center separately. They never allowed him in to meet with me. Okay. Well, I'm talking about Jay, uh, the defendant's Father. I am too. Okay, so he went to the law center or he did not? He went to the law center. I had already been admitted to the office with Trent Valletta and with Richard Vale, and he sat in the waiting room waiting to be admitted to come and be with me, and he was not allowed in. At the time that officers came to your home, uh, did you have to wake up your son? No, he was getting ready for a driver's ed course at 6 o'clock in the morning. So he was already up, is that right? Yes. And was this a driver's ed class that he took um, every day? No, it wasn't every day. It was, how many days a week would he take the driver's ed class? Uh, it, it was an irregular schedule because it was just based on availability to practice driving. I assume it was not unusual for him to be up as early as 5.30 or 6 a.m. in the morning, is that true? When he had a driver's ed lesson, that's true. Okay. Um, you, the form that you've been shown uh, here, the Miranda form uh, that you did sign, correct? Correct. That was signed at your home, is that right? No. Was that signed at the police station? Correct. Okay, sorry. And uh, you had the different glasses on, is that the way I understood? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, that's did, right. Did you tell the officers that you had any difficulty reading the form? I did. Okay, and did they read it to you? No, they just paraphrased that it was to allow them to speak with the students. Okay. That's the only explanation they provided you? Correct. And uh, once you're at the law center, um, you know that uh, the defendant, your son, was charged with the murder of Noah Graver, correct? Uh, at 4.15, I was told that. 4.15 p.m.? P.m. Um, your son... Have he, has he attended Fairfield Public Schools his entire uh, school life? Has he always attended the public school? No. Where, where did he go to school prior? He went to the Maharishi School here also in Fairfield prior to attending. Okay. And until his freshman year, is that right? Yes. So freshman year would have been his first year at Fairfield Public Schools? Yes. And... Um, what year was he at in high school whenever um, this, when the Noe McGregor was killed? Tenth grade. Right, and he had Noe McGregor as a teacher, is that correct? Yes. He had her for Spanish? Yes. Was he struggling in that class? Your Honor, objection. I think that we crossed the bounds of relevance to 
the question of waiver at this point. I think we're getting more into factual allegations and the state's purported motive, and that's outside of what we're uh, talking about here today. We're talking about the intelligence level of the defendant, um, which goes directly to the voluntariness and whether or not he waived. Oh, oh uh, did you need Mr. Brown to re-ask the question? Yes, please. Go ahead. Can I come? The camera run back, please. Just make sure I'm accurate. Uh, question, was he struggling in that class? Yes. And was he otherwise a, a pretty good student? Yes. Did he have A's or B's in the rest of his classes? Pretty much. Okay, so Spanish was the one he was struggling with, is that right? Yes. And I assume he had plans uh, beyond high school, even though he was a sophomore, was he planning on going to college? Yes. And, and do you believe as his parent, he would have had sufficient uh, academic background to at least get admitted into college? Sure, yes. All right, that's all I have. Oh, wait, hang on a second. Um, you had indicated that uh, the officers had characterized this as uh, an interview with multiple students. Is that right? Yes. And you thought there were other students or parents, or I'm sorry, other students that were being interviewed at the same time? Yes, like in a group. Okay. Did you see other parents at the law center? No, and I wondered about that. Okay. All right. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Olson. Just a couple here, Your Honor. Thank you. Annalisa, that form we're talking about, was that presented to you right when you got to the law enforcement center? No. Uh, maybe a half an hour or something. I don't quite recall, but it wasn't immediate. But all they told you was so that was so they could talk to him? Correct. Didn't talk at all about the rights listed in that top part? No. And is it your understanding that Chayden was not allowed to leave once he got to that police station? Not at all. And is that because any agent or officer told you that? Honestly, I don't, I didn't understand the parameters of anything that was going on. Trent just kept saying, everything will come clear. We're going to explain it soon enough. It wasn't until I wasn't allowed to see him that I realized he personally would be in trouble. And that explanation from Agent Valletta didn't come until long after you signed that form? After I signed it, yes. And you were never allowed to see Chayton, even when you asked? Not until, um, I think it was about nine o'clock. They gave us a couple minutes. And it was at somewhere shortly after 7.13 in the morning that you told Agent Valletta to stop the interview? Correct. No further questions, John. Mr. Uh Nothing else. Thank you. Ms. Clifford Gold, you can step down. Thank you. Any other witnesses, Mr. Olson? No other witnesses, Your Honor. Uh, counsel, it's my understanding that um, the agreement would be that defense has until November 21st to file a final brief on these issues and that the state would have until November 28th to file the final brief on these matters. Is that correct? 
That's my understanding. That's my understanding, Your Honor. Any uh, thing else that either side wants to say today? Your Honor, I just very briefly talk about the, the burden. Okay. I think, I think we probably need to make sure the record is clear. Go um, ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, in the motion to suppress, um, well, and first of all, Your Honor, I would ask and, and make sure um, that this court is going to consider all the offered exhibits that are sealed regarding the motion to suppress as well as the motion for Frank's. Um, I cannot recall whether or not that was specifically entered for that purpose. Uh, yes, I, all the exhibits submitted um, for today's hearing, um, the court will consider, and I believe that the state has a copy or my copy of, her, of the interview, is that correct? That's right. I, yeah, just to put that in context, I guess we, they had offered or they indicated this morning that they were going to offer a portion of uh, the defendant's interview. We have the entirety of it, the audio version, which is all of it. Um, in the, fact, we actually had a uh, certified shorthand reporter do a transcript of that. If that's easier for the court's consideration, we could offer that as well if there's no objection. You know, I can have a brief just off the record discussion with, with opposing counsel. Go ahead. Off the record. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, based on discussions with the state, uh, they have a, it's an audio of the entire interview and a certified transcript. I don't have an objection to either one of those being offered under, as long as it's under seal. Just so audio video, you have the audio video, we'll give you the transcript. Uh, okay, so transcripts can be marked as State's Exhibit 4? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'll admit State's Exhibit 4. Um, and uh, all the exhibits submitted today were uh, filed under seal, so that will include states one through four. Go ahead, Mr. Olson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as we discussed in chambers, um, it's the state's burden um, to show that it was a knowing and voluntary waiver of the right to remain silent and the right to an attorney um, by Chayden. Uh, this court has heard testimony on that, uh, but it is the state's burden to show that it was knowing and voluntary. Um, and regarding the evidence, I believe that, that shows that it was not knowing or voluntary. And of course, I will provide further argument and citation in, in the brief that will be submitted. Regarding the other three arguments on suppression, um, there were warrants involved. Therefore, those are Mr. Miller's burden to, sh to invalidate that warrant as provided in briefing, those warrants contain both conclusory statements not supported by fact and also fail to indicate credibility of individuals relied on by law enforcement. They don't sufficiently describe why a cell phone and a computer should be seized. They don't have a nexus to those. And they're overly broad, asking for more information and more places to search than should have been. We'll detail further in briefing, but Your Honor, those arguments are Mr. Miller's burden, and the briefing will provide that, support the motion, and show this court why those search warrants should be invalidated why they violated Mr. Miller's constitutional rights and statutory rights, and why the government illegally and unconstitutionally seized evidence. Thank you. Mr. Brown, Mr. Mullen. Judge, um, I think we filed a fairly detailed um, resistance, at least to the 
those uh, issues that uh, are the defendant's burden here. I won't restate them for the record. Uh, the standard that applies in reviewing the four search warrants uh, is found in paragraph four of our resistance. Um, we don't believe that the uh, warrants should be invalidated as the defendant has put them or has put it. We believe there is a probable cause and a nexus uh, between the things to be searched and things to be seized uh, as is required by law as well as it addresses the um, issue of uh, JB being in the confidential informant as alleged by the defense. And also, I believe our resistance covers the uh, issue relating to the chapter 232 of the juvenile code not applying under these circumstances, which certainly addresses the testimony here from the defendant's mother. So um, I would assume in, once we get the brief from the defense, we will address the voluntariness uh, issue. Um, we believe that the appropriate Miranda warnings were read to the defendant, actually it exceeded them. Uh, what the officers were required to do, he clearly understood them, initialed them, waived his Miranda rights, uh, was calm during the interview, answered questions, uh, was coherent. Uh, it will be obvious from the audio that all of those things are supported. Um, but, uh, Agent Kedley's testimony is supported by that. So the, the, the Miranda warning is uh, voluntarily waived by the defendant. Whether or not his mother wanted to talk to him, whether or not she tried to get in the room or told the officers to terminate it, makes no difference in this circumstance because of the nature of the offenses that are being investigated by the police. That's the state's position. Um, he is treated as an adult. That's the way it works uh, in, in Iowa when it comes to that particular issue. So. For those reasons, we'll uh, submit a, in writing uh, in more detail uh, that would support uh, those arguments, uh, but we believe the motion should be overruled. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Olson. No response to that. Um, just one final request, Your Honor. Okay. Um, I'd ask the court to um, allow the specific um, filing regarding our Franks preliminary hearing to be filed under seal since it will discuss the specifics of those sealed um, exhibits that the court now has. I would ask permission that we file that under seal and ask that any response from the state also be filed under seal so the specific information is not in the public until such time that it may or may not be used at trial. The state. Have well, just a point of clarification. Are we also brief? We're briefing the Frank's issue as well. I thought the court had the information with regard to the Frank's issue and you're going to make a determination concerning the, the threshold question that you have to address. If that is in favor of the defense, then we're going to have a, another hearing yeah. uh, that will get much more uh, detailed, which will be an open court, I would uh, point out. Uh, where we'll get into a lot of detail with regard to all those things that relate to that. So I'm not really sure what, he, what they're asking. It, it relates to the suppression issue. I thought that's what we were, we were providing further briefs on, not Frank's. Go ahead, Mr. Olson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have asked for just an opportunity to cite to specific parts of those exhibits that support our Frank's motion, those exhibits that are not yet, that, that have, are just oh. recently being added to the record. I asked to be able to provide, I think I called it a roadmap for this court. So this court isn't being asked to read an entire deposition or watch hours and hours of transcript. But citing those specific parts of the record require describing why I think they're important for our Frank's preliminary showing. That's what, I, that's what I'm asking to be put under seal, not a, not a full briefing, okay. just, cite, just specific discussion of the facts. So the Suppression will be what is briefed. The Franks, uh, you'll uh, provide information to the court to what to focus on. Is that what you're requesting? Yes, Your Honor. Any objection from the state? So is there a difference between those two things? Yes. <laughs> so I'll grant your request. Thank you, Your Honor. 
and we'll have till the 21st, you'll have till the 21st and the state will have till the 28th for briefing on the suppression motion. Anything else for the record, Council? I believe so, Your Honor. Not from the state, no. No, Your Honor. Okay. We'll close the record.